Hello, I am Ineos Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and I have been working on a lens flare effect inside of Adobe After Effects without the need of any external plugins. I know there are some plugins that allow you to do lens flares and they're very expensive and sometimes you just don't want to use plugins, especially if you want to share your project file. That's why I have created my own custom lens flare that actually looks good and you can customize it fully. So let's have a look inside of After Effects what it is exactly that I have created. Alright, here we are in Adobe After Effects and this is the Lens Flare custom made in After Effects that you can tweak and do a lot of cool things with it that I will go over right now. So the way it works, it's not a plugin, it's a composition that you import in whatever kind of project that you're currently working on and then below that composition on the bottom here you can apply your footage or your composition, your final project and then you can tweak uh, this lens flare along with it. So it's actually really simple to do so. You can also duplicate it and get more flares if you want to, um, but then you'll have to get some, a little bit more creative. But currently I have my footage right here. If I just deselect this, uh, this is what it actually comes with. So if I go to the control settings and press U on the keyboard, you can see I have my position uh, to animate along with my wand here. So I'm going to delete um, my keyframes right here and then we can actually just animate or flare like so. so it's completely animatable uh, using the transform here in the control setting. So you don't actually have to look into all of these settings. Uh, you can just use the control settings. Of course, if you want to get really creative, you can go in here, tweak things. Uh, it's completely customizable. So if you want to do your own thing um, or learn a lot of things about this, uh, you can also do that. Everything is open source or how, how would I say it? So in the transform, you can only animate the position. Apart from that, you can't actually animate a thing. Then let's go over all of the other things uh, right here. So I'm currently going to just put it uh, right, well, right here. Okay, so I'm going to close my transform and here we have the random seat for the spikes. The spikes are these little things here that look at, make it look actually really cool. Uh, we can change this with uh, the randomizer. So if we increase this one by one, you can see that you constantly get different kind of results and sometimes you might not like one of these so you can just uh, change that this, uh, this way. So really cool feature and it's also um, limitless so you can just go as many random effects if you uh, as you want to. So. For the spikes contrast, you can also increase the contrast for the spikes or decrease it uh, like so and then you're going to barely see them. Uh, so you can just get creative with that as well. You also have the spikes brightness which is also a little bit of a compensation to the contrast. So you can see it right here, low brightness, um, big brightness, it's going to look a little bit like this. So I'm going to currently set this at zero because I kind of uh, like the value at zero. Um, the spikes evolution is the animation of the spikes. So currently, well, let me set this at 500. It's going to be exaggerated, but it's going to give you a nice idea of what it actually is. So it's actually uh, animating these, yeah, spikes right here. So you can see uh, if we animate this, uh, we can do some really cool things with it. Of course, you want to keep it slow and really nice and progressive. So I'm going to set this back at 50, but it can really add some life to your scene uh, with uh, the evolution. We also have the spike radius, if you increase that you get results like this, uh, so yeah, quite obvious. I'm going to set it at 150 maybe, there we go, maybe a little bit less, there we go, okay. Then we have the spike's length and of course this is also pretty obvious, if we're going to increase it we're going to get something like this and if we're going to decrease it uh, we're going to get things like this, so. Uh, well, I'm currently <laughs> playing with the flare amount, um, yeah, the length, okay, so. I'm messing things up here. Okay, so right here, I should deselect this. Um, the spikes length right here, so there you go. If we're going to get this lower, okay, there, you can see it. Maybe let's set it at 70. And you can see that way, also if you increase the contrast, it's going to be shorter right here. So we have the flare amount, and you've already seen it. It's the center right here, the glow. If you lower this, it's going to uh, be yeah, smaller, and you can increase it. Um, yeah, whatever you want to do with it is possible. And then we have the amplitude and frequency and these uh, little things here are for the animation of your flare amount. So currently let's set it at like uh, 90. 
We want to animate it, make it flicker a little bit. So the amplitude is going to uh, allow us to choose how much flicker do we actually want. So do we want a variation of maybe 50 to exaggerate right now? And a frequency is how fast is that going to flicker? So let's just set it at 20 so you can easily see it. And if we are going to ramp preview this, you're going to see a very big flickering. Of course, this is way too much, um, but it just shows you the possibilities of this. So. And then lastly, we have the curves and the curves is actually used to control the color of our flare. So if we reset it right here, this is what we're going to get a black and white flare. And if we go into the RGB channels, we're going to lower maybe a little bit in the darks and brighten it up right here like so. So we get a nice contrasty flare like so. And now we can go into the reds and maybe we want to create a red flare now. So we're going to increase the red colors. And if we go into the blue, we can decrease the blue, so it's going to become a little bit more orange kind of toned. Uh, we can still increase the reds if we want to. And then go into the green and make a nice S-curve like this, and that's going to really make it pop. So uh, we're going to get some really nice results. And as you can see, it's looking really nice for a flare made within After Effects. Um, I'm actually uh, really enjoying this one here. So uh, again, we can go into the transform, move it around and yeah, we just have our flare like so. So pretty cool result. If you like it, you can always buy this flare on our website and then just import that composition. You will also have a tutorial on how to actually import it. But I just wanted to give you a nice overview of what this is. I might do a few tutorials on how I've actually created this, but I won't go into fully detail on how to actually set up this whole system uh, because there was a lot of linking to do and yeah, it took quite some time. So. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.